A Girl by Kieran Marsden 6.33am, minus one degrees. In winter, a girl stood on the train platform. The sun hadn't even thought about coming up. Not at 6.30am. It was just below freezing, and she wore a miniskirt. Her name was Abby. She was 19. Out of the eight people that were there, she stood close to the tracks. She was the only female. She pulled down on the miniskirt, feeling the eyes of the males fixated upon her. She did this every morning, telling herself she wished she picked jeans. But tomorrow, when she woke up and her naked feet hit that thick carpet of her warm bedroom, her mum left the heating on all through the night, just how Abby liked it too. She would choose the clothes that made her feel good, knowing she would be paying the price of her anxieties later. And she was doing this now, pulling the miniskirt a precious few inches lower, which was difficult, as the joint in her finger struggled to grip tight, hurting in the freezing air. From the night, the train's bright lights pierced the dark. She, and the same men as usual, made their way onto the train. Eight men's faces, walks and ways she knew very well but none of their names. Though she was freezing, Abby took off her thick grey jacket and scarf and sat at a seat with a table in between. Then, to her surprise, Grey Beard Man, she had nicknames for all of them, sat on the opposite seat directly facing her. She had felt this coming. Over the last two months, his leers had been the most forthcoming, the least self-conscious. She pulled out her phone and turned the camera on. She switched it onto selfie mode and looked at herself. Then moved the camera down slightly to look at her cleavage. All was in order. As she looked up, she noticed another two lenses aimed at the same place. But these ones were biological in nature, not mechanical. She huffed and rolled her eyes. As she moved in her seat to put her back against the train window and her feet up on the chair beside her, mainly to get away from the stairs. She pulled up on her top, trying to cover her cleavage a little, but not too much. When the train conductor came, she gave him her best smile and a little eye flutter. A child return to Linden, please. The conductor didn't question why a 15-year-old girl might be on a 6am train alone. Or that some employer might be breaching some child labour law. The pretty face had cast its spell and was working its magic. Three pound fifty, me lovely, he said, taking the opportunity to look at what he knew was a very adult pair of boobs as he handed over the ticket. She sat on her phone for the remainder of the twenty minute journey, checking Instagram, seeing how many more likes she had on each of her pictures. Every time she glanced, Greybeard was staring at her. She rolled her eyes, but couldn't help the faintest of smiles appearing on her lips. Day 2, 6.29am, minus 4 degrees. Abby stood in her usual spot on the platform, furthest forward, looking at her phone. For the first time since autumn when she had secured the job at the coffee shop, she genuinely did wish she had jeans on, or something similar in manner covering her legs. It was freezing, and her knees hurt. She never wanted to see the lights of the train so badly. As she peered down the tracks, a peculiarity occurred. Down the platform, away from everybody else, was a new figure, tall, and a mystery silhouette in the darkness. As the train lights came piercing around the corner, she got a glimpse of him. Dressed in a grey coat and black jeans, and shiny brown shoes was a dark-haired man. But that's all she could see as the bright lights hit her eyes directly, and she had to look away. She almost jumped onto the train to get out of the cold, and the usual eight men all entered behind her, except one. Abby walked down the train aisle and onto the next carriage. Sat alone in the far corner, 
was this man she had never seen before. She watched him take off his coat. He was wearing a silk white shirt, with the top two buttons undone, revealing chest hair. The shirt gripped his muscular shoulders tightly, and she watched this man with stubble and black hair. He didn't even glance her way. She sat in the middle of the carriage. All the other males had stopped in the previous one. She had not been followed, to her surprise. The usual train conductor came, and she didn't put on the usual kind smile and higher pitched voice she normally did when asking for a child's ticket. She barely even looked at him, and the conductor almost asked for ID, but he thought against it. She tried peering between the seats to see if she could get a glimpse of the man. And that's exactly what he was. The other males on this train had been old, poor boys. But he had been a man. When the train pulled into Lindham Station, she got up and deliberately headed to the train door she knew he would be getting off at. Even though it was a slightly further walk. She allowed him to get up first, and then she made her move. Though it was arctic outside, she left off her coat taking long, slow steps down the carriage towards him, chest out a little more than what would have been natural posture. The train door was about to open, and when it did, he exited the carriage without so much of a glimpse her way. 5.51am. One degree. That morning, Abby concentrated more on her lipstick and mascara. The lipstick brighter, the mascara thicker. He was there again, waiting on the platform. Her knees clattered together as she waited behind him, getting on the train and deliberately sitting on the seat adjacent to his. She sat with her back against the window, her feet up, facing directly at this man. But still, he did not look. His eyes only concentrated on the back of the chair in front of him. When the train conductor came, she said loudly, Adult, return to Linden, please. Eyes focused on the mystery man. Really? Is it your birthday? Said the conductor. But Abby didn't listen to him, or reply. The conductor looked at where her eyes were fixated. He handed her the ticket, and muttered, Bloody child, under his breath. Morning, sir, said the conductor, turning to the man. He flashed him a rail card and ticket, and at that moment he looked at Abby. She almost gasped at his green eyes, and he grinned at her, and then went back to looking at the seat in front of him. What's your name? said Abby, hardly aware she'd even said it. The man looked at her and grinned again. Adam? Do you work in Lindham? Yeah, you? Yeah, me too, said Abby. The man grinned and went back to looking at the chair. What train do you catch home? said Abby. <laughs> what? <laughs> the 638. Oh, that's cool, said Abby. Abby had waited in Starbucks after work, sipping a hot chocolate with marshmallow on top, watching white snow begin to fall outside. By the time she was walking to the train station, she was leaving footprints in the snow. She could see him on the platform, under yellow light, and when the train came, she deliberately got on at the other end to him. The train was a lot busier than her morning one, and it moved through the December flat fields that were turning to white. By the time the train had turned up to her hometown, the snow was now nothing short of a blizzard. And as she stepped down onto the platform, she had to be careful not to slip. She walked through the cold night, just able to see his tall figure in his grey winter's coat, as they passed under the streetlights of their little town. Thankfully, it was only ten minutes until she watched him walk into an housing estate. It felt middle class, a nicer part of town to where her and her mum lived. And she passed colourful Christmas light decorations, until they came to a dark house at the end, where she watched him take out his keys and go inside. She knocked on his door. Only then did the lights turn on. She listened to the key turn, and the door open. Are you serious? 
he said with a smile. She didn't understand. She gave him one back, pushing out her chest ever so slightly and widening in her eyes, a smile she'd been working on since she was fourteen. She didn't say a word, and he actually laughed as he opened the door. He closed the door behind her, and she could smell cigarette smoke. He led her down the hallway to his living room. Beer cans and two empty bottles of whiskey were on the coffee table. At the far end of the room, where the window was but the curtains were closed, was a canvas and easel. A bright light shone upon it. It was the only light in the room, and it revealed a painting half done. She knew little about religion, but she knew this was Jesus Christ on the crucifix. The bottom half of the painting was not done, but on the top half, she could see the blood spilling from his hands and the horror on his face. Sit, he said. She sat on a fabric sofa she knew wasn't clean and listened to the clatter of glass coming from a nearby kitchen and then the flicker of a lighter. He returned to the room with two glasses of wine and a cigarette in mouth. He put a glass in front of her and sat in a chair nearly opposite, leaning back in the lamplight blowing smoke from his mouth, concealing his face in grey, waiting for her to break the silence. What job do you do in Lindum? <laughs> Seriously, he said, beginning to look around his room. It was then she noticed all the paintings on the walls. You could have asked me anything in the world. And you decided to ask me that. What tiny little screw I am in this capitalist hegemony. How have I got myself in there? You know, to keep the electricity bill going and the, uh, well, to prevent myself from starving, right? <laughs> Who cares? Can I go, please? Said Abby. <laughs> Why did you come here? I don't know, really. You really mean that, don't you? said the man. Abby couldn't even look at him at this point. He reached forward and took a gulp of wine. Because I didn't look at you on the train. That played on your self-conscious so much. You thought it was worth coming to a man's house you know nothing about. Just to be wanted. If only for the briefest of seconds. You don't even know my name. Please, can I go now? Said Abby. The man took out his phone and dialed a number. Hi, can I get a taxi from 84 Ravendale? Yeah, hey Tony, it's me. Thanks, man. I actually am sorry. Hmm. What's your name? Said the man, flicking ash into his ashtray on the coffee table. Abby? She said, looking down into her lap, beginning to cry. Abby, don't do anything that stupid ever again. <laughs> Sorry, said Abby. Abby, stop worrying. She stood in the hallway as the taxi called to say it was here. Abby, you are very beautiful. You just need to begin to believe it. And I don't mean on the outside. There's more to you than that. There's a woman in there. Go find her. She looked him in the eyes, and there she saw a smile she understood. He leant in and kissed her on the cheek. Good night, Abby, he said, opening the door to the cold winter's night. As he closed the door shut, he headed back into his living room. He poured himself another glass of red wine and walked over to his latest work, one he had spent the last six weeks on only half complete, and he poured his drink over the canvas. He watched the red liquid soak into the painting and pushed over the easel, unsure if he was ever capable of being human again, wondering if his sacrifice was worth it.